I am Michelle Shelfont, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, hello, everybody. It's Michelle Shelfont. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I'm delighted to be here with you on my birthday week. (laughs) Thank you to everybody that wished me happy birthday messages. My birthday was on Monday, November 9th. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Every year I ask the same thing of all of you. One thing that is to go to Apple Podcasts and write me a review. Five star review, please. (laughs) Let me know what you think of the podcast. I do read those and I love to hear from you guys. So that's the only thing I would like from you. Please do that. I love you. Thank you. Today we're talking about how to stay healthy. Let me say it this way, in our healthy adult, in our adult chair during the holidays. You know, I put this question out in the adult chair closed group on Facebook. And I said, you know, what do you guys need to hear? Holy moly. It was an avalanche of requests. Like, how do we stay healthy in our healthy adult during these holidays? How do you navigate? You know, this year has been quite crazy. Um, But any year, I have to say, going into the holidays, people ask me this question. But this year, more than ever, people are asking, how in the world are we supposed to navigate these holidays with so much stress in 2020? So that's what I'm talking about. I have three steps for you today. Very simple steps. Simple, simple. You know me, I'm all about simple. Simple psychology, grounded spirituality. That's what I'm all about. But I want to remind you also, you're going to hear me talk about this, but this is why every single year in November, we do the 30-day journaling challenge. It is in order to help you to stay connected to yourselves during the holidays and throughout the rest of the year and into the new year, every day you get a journaling prompt in your inbox from yours truly. I craft brand new journaling prompts every single year. This is our fourth year doing this. So you can still join, even though it started on November 1st, you can join today and this today will be your first day, but it's at the adultchair.com forward slash 30 days. And that's three O days theadultchair.com forward slash 3-O-D-A-Y-S. You can start today to really learn how to stay connected to yourselves during these, what could be a little stressful times, but yeah, it really helps you to take a deep dive into yourself and um, work through a lot of your own stuff. Clean the slate. I'm all about that too. So anyway, all right, here we go. How do we stay in our healthy adult in the adult chair during the holidays. How do we do that? You know, it's interesting. I posted a video a few weeks ago and I was talking about how do we navigate? I think I was talking about the election actually, because there's so much stress about that, but you know, we can apply any sort of stress in our lives, all of 2020. How do we stay connected to ourselves? And how do we not let people steal our happiness? You know, I have a friend and she said to me, you know, every single year, my brother-in-law, he steals my joy. He steals my joy every single holiday season. I hate doing Thanksgiving with him. He steals my joy. And I looked at her and I said, nobody can steal your joy. It's like saying someone can steal your power. Nobody can take our power hear me. What we do instead is we give our power away. We drop our power. You know, I remember when my husband and I, when we did, you know, I love, I love to work on myself. So I, I had taken him to, or we went together, I should say to marriage counseling, like many years ago, it was actually when we still lived in North Carolina many years ago. So it was probably 15 years ago. And, um, 
I remember talking to the marriage counselor and I said, you know, he stole my power. And I, I can still hear myself saying that. And I'm like, I am so different now. I don't agree with that statement. He couldn't have taken my power. I willingly gave it away. Nobody can take our power. You know, when I had a private practice, I would have my clients, I had a big red blow up rubber ball in my office and I would have them hold the rubber ball and I would say, okay, this is your power. And I would try to rip it out of their arms and they would grab on tight just to demonstrate you really do give your, you, you can't give your power, you give your power away versus me stealing it. I can try to steal it and take it. But ultimately what happens is we let go of our power and hand it to someone else, or we just drop it. So think about your power, your connection to self, your knowing who you are. All of that is your power, your sense of self. You drop it like a, like you drop a red ball or a big red ball, or you are handing it off to someone else. And when you do that, that's when you're quote unquote, losing your joy. Nobody can steal that away from you. Mm -mm, It's impossible. So Also, the moment that we lose our emotional balance and fall into story and assumption, we have lost our joy and our power and our happiness. So be present. The moment you fall into building up a story around someone or, oh my God, this holiday is going to be so bad because blah, 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 blah. You're in story. You're, 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 you have no idea what's coming in the future. So make sure you stay in the present moment. All right. So here we go. The way that we stay in joy, or I should say in our healthy adults throughout the holidays and all year long is to stay connected to yourself. So here are the three ways that we're going to do that. Number one, self-care. What I mean by self-care is how do you refuel yourself? So when your car needs gas, you put gas in it. What do you as your human being self What do you do to recharge yourself? What do you enjoy doing for yourself? I enjoy people. I love that I have friends and family nearby, nearby, like, because we just moved back to North Carolina, but I love my alone time. How I recharge is being alone. But when I say recharge, and you guys got to think about this, if you need to be alone, it's not, it's not about just watching television or watching binging out on Netflix. That's wonderful. But true recharging is when you're not distracted, when the mind is not distracted. So it's, it could be that you're reading a book or that you are in meditation or that you're just sitting quietly out and looking. I sit and look outside at my water or sitting in nature, going for a walk in nature, but not listening to anything. It's really being with yourself without distraction, take a bath with candles. Like how do you recharge your being? It doesn't mean you have to do it for hours a day. And I've had people write in and say, well, I can't because I have kids. I have three, three kids under six. You can find 15 minutes. You can have them all nap. You can have them all get in the other room and do something, watch a show or tell them all to read or do something, but you've got to make yourself a priority to recharge. You have to make yourself a priority. So self-care is of the utmost importance. Perhaps it's just going for a morning walk before anyone even is awake in your house. What if it's grabbing your dog or your cat, or maybe not an animal, but curling up under a blanket in the evening and journaling or first thing in the morning, you have to think about what do you do for yourself? What refuels or recharges you? Think about plugging into a battery. You're a battery. You need to be recharged. Like how are you charging yourself up? If your car runs out of gas, it will not go. So how are you filling yourself up with gas? If you're not doing this and you're not recharging yourselves, you're going to be short on patience, quick tempered. You may feel drained, overwhelmed. So number one, the number one thing you have to do for yourselves specifically during the holiday time, but also year round is to make sure you are practicing 
self care. Make sure you're getting yours in and filling yourself up. Number two, acceptance. Okay. Acceptance is a golden gift. You guys, when we apply it into our lives, it changes our perspective on the very thing that's triggering, that's triggering us or the very person that is triggering us acceptance because we cannot change others. So if someone is irritating you, you can't change them, but you can change your perspective on them. For those of you that know the Course in Miracles, that's what this is all about. A miracle simply happens when we shift our perspective or our perception of another. So remember this, if someone is irritating you, people change when they're ready to change, when they want to change. You can't change someone else. In other words, I will get in shape when I decide. If 20 people say to me, you need to lose weight, your blood pressure's high, your liver enzymes are up, you've got whatever people say, okay? Your blood pressure's high, you really need to lose weight. The, that person will lose weight when they decide. You can tell them 50 th- reasons why they need to lose weight. They will not do it until they're ready. I will look for a job when I'm ready to do that. I will be a great friend when I want to be. I will choose and change who I am when I want to be. I will go to AA when I decide. Like no one's going to make another human being do something that they don't want to do. And if they do it, they're going to do it once or twice and then they're going to revert revert back to who they really are. Human beings change when they decide that they're ready to change. It's got to come from within that person. So here's the cool thing with acceptance. And again, I've said this before, with acceptance, it's not about condoning or liking what that person is doing. So let's talk about specifically with the holidays, because that's what this is about today. But if someone shows up and Again, you don't like that person, call them your brother-in-law, your mother-in-law, your in-law, some in-law, call them an extra neighbor, call them whomever, grandma, grandpa, mother, father. When you can accept that who they are, their personality, their choice of talking, you know, what they're talking about, et cetera, et cetera. When you, when you can fully accept that this is just who they are, And it really has nothing to do with you. It's just who they are and how they're showing up. It's the craziest thing. It makes them seem smaller in the room. All of a sudden, that person, from your perspective, remember, stops sucking all the air out of the room. They don't have power over you anymore when you can accept them. So for my friend, I said to her, the one that said, um, you know, my brother-in-law, sucks the life out of me. You know, he takes my joy every year. I said, what if you can accept him that he's just a jerk? Just accept him. Now he was just a jerk. Like my, my friend would watch how he talked to other people in the family and he was just a jerk. And I said, so accept that he's a jerk. He wasn't blatantly mean to her. He was a jerk to everybody. I said, it's not pointed at you. He's got some narcissism in there. He's a little passive aggressive, but the more she could accept him, the smaller he seemed, if that makes sense. It's like the energy with this person started to shrink. Again, I didn't say you had to like that person, but what's fascinating is when you accept them for who they are, they, you start maybe being able to even like them or chuckle at how ridiculous they are, but you got to accept them. So when you go into the holidays, you're like, oh God, you know, aunt so-and-so is going to be there and you're, or uncle so-and-so is going to be there. And you're so uptight about it. You're stressed. Think about who that person is right now. Can you accept that that's just how they are? Just accept them for who they are. If you guys remember, I talked to you on many podcasts about my uncle that was awful, like major narcissist. He had mental, he had other mental things going on. He was distorted thinking. He was delusional, like crazy and ruined so many of our family functions. Like he'd walk in the room and everyone would get up tight. We didn't know if he'd be drinking and causing us all of that. 
this is the man I hated, 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 hated. And it wasn't until my 20s and I started, again, I had a private practice and I started learning all these tools I'm giving you that I started realizing, you know, this guy is a sick guy. Like I, there was no judgment in that statement. I was like, he's really sick. Like he's got mentally, something's not right there. And I started accept, seeing him for who he really was and realized it has nothing to do with me. He treats everybody like this. And I could accept him. His energy got small. Like all of a sudden I would expect him to come in and be angry about something or tell someone off or talk about an instance where he just told someone off at the store where he was when he was picking up groceries, you know, that's just what he did. And it used to embarrass me and I'd get him angry. And then I was like, oh, well, that's just who he is. And there was no triggering. The moment we can accept someone fully, the triggering becomes far less and even can go away. And that's what happened with me and my uncle. And this is a man hated. I hated this man. And in the end, he passed away just over 10 years ago. I had gotten to a place where I could go visit him with my sister and we would chuckle about this man. So to go from this huge aversion to laughing like, oh, well, like he's Looney Tunes, but we'd walk in and go, oh, well, that's just how he is. Um, he didn't hurt us ever. And I don't condone that for a millisecond. But his thinking was distorted and he was off and, you know, it just was how he was. But when I could fully accept him, the angst went away. And there are some, some days still where I think, gosh, I wish I could call him and check in. It's the craziest thing. He did not change at all. My perspective changed about him. So when you think about someone like your mother-in-law who might not be affectionate toward you, look around. Is she affectionate toward anyone? Maybe that's just her personality. Can you accept that that's how she is? She's got something going on. She's passive aggressive. And again, I don't leave, I hate labels, but when you look at someone and it helps you to see them clearer, it's okay to go, huh? And I don't use these words as judgments or blame. It's fact. So if this person is, has narcissistic, narcissistic tendencies or passive aggressive or, whatever people, ble whatever that is, it, if it helps you to accept them, it's okay. It's not a label. It's not a judgment. It's fact. It's reality. So having hope, remember that people will change is wonderful. So have hope that so-and-so may change someday, but drop your expectation of them to change for you to be happy. That's what needs to change. So accept them. And you know what? And you might be the person that your mother-in-law is only different toward you. Accept it. Unless she's abusive, just accept it. Watch how things change. The dynamic between you will change. Just accept her for who she is or your father-in-law, whoever it is accept them, then it gives the opportunity for the energy to change, for everything to change in that relationship. You, you might be surprised. I've seen this happen many, many times. But accept that, okay, so they're not exactly the nicest toward you. Okay, so my mother-in-law does not like me. Own it. Say it to yourself. Say it out loud. My mother-in-law really doesn't like me. Now, if she's cruel, if she's unkind, that's a whole different story. That's when if you've got an in-law, remember, when your partner, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whomever it is, needs to stand up for you on your behalf, okay? Your family is your responsibility. Your husband, wife's family is their responsibility. They should be treating you well, all right? Okay, but again, let's go back to this. Expectation of others only hurts you in the end, so... And I'm saying this is very different from, you know, expecting your kids to be home at curfew. That's a great expectation. But when you expect your mother-in-law to show up differently toward you and nothing's changed, <laughs> there's no reason for that to happen. Let that go. Re expectation is going to let you down. So when you fully accept someone for who they are, it sets you free. Okay. Except this is just how they are. It has nothing to do with you. And if it does have, some, have something to do with you because they don't like you because you're the new daughter-in-law or the new son-in-law, okay, accept that too. It will change your perspective. 
Okay. It really leads to less triggering. Okay. Moving on to number three, boundaries, 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 my fa- one of my favorite topics, boundaries. Now, let me just say again, I'm saying I'm inviting you to accept people for who they are. Okay. However, abuse is never, ever, ever, ever. Okay. It's 100% unacceptable. If there's abuse happening, you got to walk away, you got to leave, you got to call the police, etc. I'm not okay with abuse in any way, shape or form. Verbal, mental, emotional, and especially physical, all of the above. None of them. Okay. So I'm not saying to accept someone when they're gaslighting you. I'm never saying to accept someone because they only slapped you once. Heck no. Get out of there. No way. So let's just be clear about that. However, boundaries are a very necessary part of, of again, just our, a help. That's what healthy adults use and do. They set boundaries. But when we're going through the holidays, you really need to practice your boundaries and you really need to get clear on what your boundaries are. You know, boundaries protect your, your values, your morals, your ideas. That's what boundaries are protecting your beliefs, all of it. So if you're going to the holidays and someone's going to bring up the election and you really don't want to talk about that at the table, what are you going to do? What if someone, what if you're someone that either that wants everyone to wear a mask, you know, when they come to the party, to your holiday party, or you don't want them to wear a mask, what are you going to do? It's again, this is about your truth. Okay. What's your truth? If it's your party, what are your, your rules and boundaries around what you want? And you can't get this wrong. If someone challenges you, then they're not welcome. Your truth is okay. It's your truth but you need to put boundaries around what you believe and then speak them, share them. Boundaries simply teach other people how you want to be treated. Boundaries are very necessary. If you want to have a Thanksgiving that is politics free, okay, no conversations about politics because it's only going to be an uproar, uproar, then you need to say that before people come. Just, hey guys, Wanted you to know, we're going to do a holiday, no pol- no political talking allowed. Just wanted you to know, if you don't feel like you can reframe from that, then you might want to pass this year. You're not saying it with attitude. You're not saying it with emotion. It's a fact. It's just a, fla- a fact. And if everyone agrees not to talk politics and someone slips at the table, it's your job to speak up and say, hey, I just want to remind you, remember, we're not going to do politics this year. Thank you. Let's change the subject. Have a subject on your back burner that you can then bring up. Okay. Your job is to take care of yourself and your party. If it's your party, if that person says, well, I need to talk about politics. I can't believe you're not letting me talk about, I would like to talk about this whole election and da, 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 da. You say very lovingly, I'm so sorry. It might be best that you don't come this year. And I want you to know that boundaries are also for you. So I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day and he said, you know what? My wife and I are not going to go and do Thanksgiving with her family because it's just going to be, it's, there's too much emotion in the air still. And I don't want to get into a big political discussion. So we're choosing not to go to the holidays. That's also a boundary. You're boundarying yourself and you're not going. It's not that you, that he hates his in-laws. He just feels like in order to protect himself, he's not going to go. It's okay. And if the other party, you know, if if then the in-laws would say, well, what do you mean you're not coming? You just say, you have to hold firm and say, so sorry. We just really need to take, this year has been a doozy just taking the year off from holidays and seeing, or from being around a lot of people throughout the end of the year. It's perfectly okay to say that. You don't have to do anything you do not want to do. Okay. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. And only, you know, what's best for you. Whatever's inside of you is what you're protecting. That's what the boundaries are for. Boundaries are all about simplicity. Remember, do not 
get lost in the weeds. Do not get lost in apologies and excuses. Just state what you would like and move on. It's not personal. You tell the people, hey, I love you, but we're just not coming this year. We'll see you next year. Period. Period. That's it. If you do attend a a party or a function or a holiday gathering, someone's being ugly to you, leave. You walk over, you grab your things, you grab your kids and your spouse, your partner, your boyfriend, girlfriend, time to go. Let's go. There's no emotion. You just leave. That's a boundary. Okay. Many, many, many ways to set boundaries, but they're simple. They don't have to be complicated. You don't have to get all emotional. You don't have to yell and scream. Boundaries are not confrontational. They're not angry. It's just like, yeah, that's not okay with me. I'm just going to leave. I'll see you later. We're out. So there's so much we could talk about with boundaries. You guys remember, if you want more help with boundaries, don't forget this entire month, we're working on boundaries in the TAC Tribe membership. The whole month I'm talking about boundaries. I'm giving you exercises on how to craft boundaries, live Q&A, the whole nine yards. You can go to theadultchair.com forward slash membership if you want to join us for this month. It's not too late. Everything's been recorded. There's still a few more live things happening. So anyway, so um, this is it, you guys. You have to set boundaries. Do it for yourself. Make them crystal clear. Okay. These three tools are going to help you to navigate the holidays or any time of the year with much, much, much greater ease. I promise you that it is. These are three just really, really, really important things to remember for yourself in order to stay healthy in your healthy adult and in your adult chair. That's what this is all about. You've got to navigate the holidays from a healthy place for yourselves. This is how you do it. So anyhow, I wish you all happiness. Maintain your joy, maintain your power. Don't drop it and certainly do not hand it off to anyone. Remember who you are and you can have a really lovely holiday season. And do not forget if you want some added help throughout the holidays, it's 100% free. You can join theadultchair.com forward slash 30 days, our journaling challenge. You will get one journaling prompt a day for 30 days, starting whatever day you sign up and it is not too late. So you can come join that and you can go at your own pace, you guys, and you'll learn how to hold onto your power because you'll have a deeper understanding of who you are through this, through the 30 day journaling challenge. Anyhow. All right. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and I'll see you seated right here in the adult chair.